Top Med Talk. Hello, I'm Joff Lacey and welcome to Top Med Talk and our latest set of broadcasts here at the Exhibition Centre at ASA 2018 in San Francisco. I have the pleasure of being joined by Dr. Rob Stevens, who is a senior lecturer at UCL and a consultant in anaesthesia at UCH in London. Uh, And he's also in charge of the anaesthetic program for medical students. So I've just uh, had him walk past our scientific booth here at ASA, and I've grabbed him to spend a couple of minutes chatting about his involvement in teaching medical students anaesthesia. Rob, welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. Um, so teaching med students anaesthesia, that's, uh, isn't, isn't it more of a postgraduate subject? Tell me about your involvement and what you're doing at the moment. Well, thanks, Joss. So my involvement, uh, I think, came from my time as a medical student when I, my only recollection was getting thrown out of theatres and yeah. shouted at by... I can't imagine um, that, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I got thrown out of theatres and I thought, hmm, OK, well, that's not so great. And then later on in my medical student time, I saw quite an impressive anaesthetist who anaesthetised someone with a subdural on the ITU, then took the patient to a neurological hospital uh, where the patient had uh, their uh, clot evacuated. So that really stuck in my mind as, gosh, that person could do that on his or her own. Uh, Of course, not the surgery, but everything surrounding that, including talking to the relatives and reassuring them. So that was my sort of early experiences. And then I think uh, as a trainee, I found the physiology exciting. And then, of course, I became a a consultant. And uh, it struck me that we have so much to offer the medical students. We're one of the largest hospital specialties, certainly in my own hospital, over 80, Mm. 70, 80 consultants. Um, And so I sort of felt implicitly we should be all over teaching the medical students physiology, pharmacology, some communication, ethics, um, you know, blood management, uh, interpreting blood gases, ECGs, uh, chest radiographs. uh, And that's not even like acute care that we that is kind of our bread and butter. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Joss. So I really wanted to help. There was already a good program started by my colleagues, and I wanted to try and up the game and, and show actually my anaesthetic colleagues, my consultant colleagues, that um, this is how we can do it. We don't have to talk about the vaporizer if we don't want to, or the uh, ventilator, or how the anaesthetic machine works. Um, it's not about that. It's about all those transferable skills. Because at the moment, certainly from my experience, and as you alluded to in your experience, med students have very minimal exposure to the anaesthetic specialty. Uh, are, are you able to quantify kind of the extent to which that involvement is and, uh, and why it's so little? Well, I was really lucky to be asked by the Royal College, actually, of anaesthetists, um, which really chimed with my own desires, to survey with some colleagues on, on a committee uh, what the UK experience of teaching anaesthesia, perioperative medicine, critical care and pain to undergraduates. Uh, was and we found there was a huge range so we, we did a telephone interview with, with uh, the, the leads at each medical school all 33 and we, we found for example four or five had no uh, critical care teaching oh several had no pain no formal pain teaching um, but yet many had had incredibly uh, detailed and integrated into acute care um, teaching with uh, acute care physicians, with surgeons. Some had a combined airway teaching session with the airway surgeons. Incredible. So we found a huge variety of, of experiences across across the UK, certainly. So what are you hoping to do off the back of that? Are you wanting to formalise a more rigid structure for med students in the UK in terms of how they're exposed to anaesthesia? Well, when we were surveying, we sort of strongly heard from the sort of experts or the teachers. They didn't want too much didactic information given to them about what they should or shouldn't do. Um, so myself and colleagues uh, at, at the Royal College of Anesthetists came up with a, a educational framework. So ideas of great practice that were going on, you know, Southampton, Belfast, Edinburgh, Cardiff, and so on. Um, and also we wanted to put down on paper some of these amazing ideas that people had and we did come up with a, a suggested curriculum or things that were mapped to the, what the GMC says um, medical students should know called outcomes for graduates. Um, so we, we were able to sort of say, we think these parts of outcomes for graduates, we can teach some of this. 
Um, so, for example, uh, it would be dealing with uncertainty. That's a big thing uh, that GMC says uh, doctors find stressful. And think we can deal, in, if we're a critical care physician particularly, or a pain physician, for sure. But uh, as an anaesthetist too, you know, we, we're asked questions. And, uh, or statistics, what's mm. the chance of this? How about consenting? So we, we thought, thought it was really important that we didn't say we were the sole people to do all of those things. That wouldn't be right. Um, but we're well placed to do yeah, it. Certainly. And, and that also we give confidence to someone like yourself or me, both jobbing anaesthetist too, right? Uh, to say, yeah, I, if given a bit of thought, I can talk about consent. I can and, and come and come with medical student with me and let's talk to the patient and their families, their relatives, perhaps the children if it's you know, if it's all the parents, depending on, on the age of the child, and, and about their experiences. And let's, let's, let's talk about communication, for example. And so at your, uh, your professional home, so at UCL, UCL and UCH, mm. uh, how have you changed the way in which you are currently or planning to teach med students? So I think a few things. We've done a few things. Uh, we've sort of reached out, in that American phrase, mm -hmm. to my colleagues. Uh, and and, and now I've got many other colleagues involved and really passionate about teaching medical students. I, they can see the point of it. Um, I've developed a load of, well, we, we've had 250,000 views on our YouTube sites, which wow. are, which are um, some single best answers um, for medical students, uh, some specific things about critical care, uh, about an introduction to anesthesia, about pain and so on. Um, we've got our medical students now more involved um, in, they do it on calls with us at our, mm. several of our sites. Um, myself and others are now teaching year one and year two medical students some physiology and practicals, which is great because they see straight away, oh, this person's an anaesthetist. Oh, that's kind of interesting. What's all that about? And we have year one students coming to theatre with us. And that's an important part. I mean, you said that your interest in anaesthesia sparked from, you know, uh, being interacting with a particularly impressive anaesthetist when you're a med student. Yeah. This is an opportunity for us to promote our specialty to med students to go, oh, hey, that's something I might actually want to do when I'm when I've graduated, when I'm older, you know, and that's that's as important as ever, yeah. particularly in the NHS, where you know retainment and specialties is 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 a is a key uh, a key thing to focus on. Yeah, so I, I suppose. That at some level, Joss, it's about teaching, you know, the physiology, a bit of pharmacology, and then associated skills that we all have to do core uh, as doctors. But also at a higher level, it's about how to be a doctor. Um, can I show them by my actions? Hopefully I do. With patients to be kind to themselves, kind to patients, and kind to their colleagues. And so it's about also a sort of a meta level, a higher level, um, how to be a, a, an okay doctor that's sustainable to them, have a, a, an interesting career, have great colleagues. Um, it, it's showing them a way to be a doctor, I think. Well, I hope. That's what I try to do. So uh, for consultant anaesthetists, trainee anaesthetists out there who find that their day-to-day -day life has very little uh, interaction with med students, mm. um, but it may be now listening to this thinking, actually, I'm, I, I think I need to change this. What, what will be your message to them? Is there, are we going to have some more kind of joined up thinking approach to try and rectify this? What, what would you say to them? I would say they should maybe have a little glance through the Royal College documents. So if they Google uh, medical student, uh, Royal College of Anaesthist, um, perioperative medicine, then they will get to that document. They could also Google UCL Stevens, get to my page that has loads of resources, uh, or go on our YouTube sites, um, or, or get in touch with me directly if they Google UCL Stevens. They'll see my email at the bottom of the page. But I would just urge them to, wherever they are, to think there is a point for them teaching the medical students. So, for example, medical students, when they come to us, have not been taught to uh, open a glass vial. Yeah. You know, you go, whoa, how crazy is that? Of course it's not crazy. There isn't a, a book on opening a glass vial, but you show them how this is done. And then the next time, get them to open the drug and to drop some drugs for you under your direct supervision. Yeah. And maybe put the monitors on the patient, talk to the patient, make sure they face the patient. When the patient comes in the anesthetic room and say, hello, I'm a medical student. I'm, you know, Sunita, a medical student. Um, is it okay if I, I just put these mon routine monitors on you? Yeah. So these are the basic things, and it gives them great confidence. And they feel useful. We feel that they're helping us. Um, our ODPs can then teach them how great that is. Um, and they get these skills to, to be great doctors. 
Well, Robert, I definitely feel that we've got a, a lot of work to do. So I'm very pleased that you're kind of promoting our involvement in undergraduate uh, teaching. And I certainly hope to increase my involvement as well as, as my career progresses. But we're going to have to leave it there because we've run out of time. But all I would say is please visit us on uh, topmedtalk.com uh, and subscribe to enjoy our totally free uh, access to all our material on there. Um, and if you're at the ASA, then please come and uh, find us in the scientific and educational exhibits, uh, S08, and also to listen to live discussions at the Smiths exhibition booth, which is booth 1519, where you can listen to Professor Monty Mython and friends discuss the hot topics of enhanced recovery. Thanks for listening, uh, and we'll be back in touch soon. Thank you. Thank you. Top Talk.